After watching the video, the learners should be able to identify the use of propaganda, construct their own propaganda with specific types, and influence others to properly use different types of propaganda. Everybody loves to watch TV, right? What specific time you love to watch TV shows? At daytime or nighttime? What can you usually see in TV aside from its shows? Advertisements? Announcements? You're right! We can see a lot of products that we are using in everyday life. Hello, kiddies. I know your answer is yes. So go ahead and get your module entitled Recognizing Propaganda Devices. I am Teacher Giselle, your learning pal in English 6. Kiddies, this module was designed and written with you in mind. It is here to help you identify the use of different types of propaganda devices. But before that, let's have first a recall on our previous topic. Identify what type of factual text is described in each sentence. Are you ready? Yeah! Let's have a review. Identify what factual text type is being described in each sentence. If it is description, persuasion, discussion or argument, recount, or procedural. Number one, it retells an event or experience or series of events. What type of factual text is that? Very good! It is a recount type of factual text. Number two. It argues one side of an argument or discusses both sides of an issue. What type of factual text is that? Good job! That is discussion or argument type of factual text. Number three. It instructs someone on how to do something or how something was done. What type of factual text? That's great! It is procedural type of factual text. Number four, it gives a vivid description of the characteristics or features of something. What type of factual text is that? You're right, that is a description type of factual text. Number five, it persuades or sways someone to do or believe in something. What type of factual text is that? From the word itself, persuade, that's great. Persuasion, 
type of actual text. Number six, it includes instructions and user guides. What type of factual text is that? Very good. That is procedural type of factual text. Number seven. It is an advertisement, a sale notice, a slogan. A shop sign, a warning. What type of factual text is that? That's correct. It is a persuasion type of factual text. Number eight. These can be a debate a letter to the editor, a formal letter of complaint, arguing for or against an idea, and discussing issues. What type? Very good. Discussion or argument type of factual text. Number nine. It includes brochures, character descriptions, and biographies. Can I hear your answers? Very good. That is a description type of factual text. Number 10. Examples are diary entry, moment in time, witness statement, and postcard. What type of factual text? That's great! We call it as recount type of factual text. There you have it, kids. You have learned a lot in our previous topic. Have you tried to convince someone to try a new product? How do you do it? These are the local products we have here in Kapalong. Think of way which you can promote this product to everyone. That is way very creative. Congratulations, kids! You did a great job! Bias A judgment based on a personal point of view or prejudice in favor of or against one thing, usually in an unfair manner. It means that a person prefers an idea and possibly does not give equal chance to a different idea. Bias is generally seen as a one-sided perspective. It is usually found in essay writing. Bias can be influenced by several factors such as popularity. The following are characteristics of bias that you should be able to recognize either in print or in digital materials. Number one, heavily opinionated. Number two, relies on unsupported claims. Number three, presents highly selected facts but offers only opinion. Number four, tries to sell something in disguise. Number five, uses extreme or inappropriate language. Number six, tries to persuade you to think in a certain way with no regard for factual evidence. 
Propaganda refers to the spreading of information, ideas, or rumor with the intention of influencing people's opinions or emotions. Advertisement presents different points of ideas to the viewers such as to inform, entertain, persuade, and criticize. So number one is testimonial. And this is when you use a well-known, respected person to endorse a product or service. There's tons of examples of this, um, but one of them that came to mind to me was Michael Jordan. Um, while he endorses not only his own products, but other products as well. So Hanes underwear is a Michael Jordan endorsed testimony of, hey, these are, these are good. You must use them because Michael Jordan uses them. Okay. Number two. Glittering generalities. So this is when you have words or ideas that evoke a positive emotional response from an audience. And many times in glittering generalities, virtue, virtue words are used. So this was a campaign poster for um, President Barack Obama. He wasn't the president at the time. He was... Uh, campaigning to be president, but the virtue word that was used was hope. Okay. Um, and remember, you guys can pause this video if you need to pause, if I'm going too fast for you. So pause it in between so that you can get all of these items word for word. Number three is transfer. So this is the act of relating something or someone we like or respect with a product. Symbols are constantly used in this form of propaganda. This is different from testimonial because it doesn't necessarily have to be a real person. Testimonial is usually somebody who's famous um, and, and they're speaking up and they're testifying towards the goodness of that product or idea. Whereas transfer is more like a concept. So in um, the World War I and II recruitment posters, we have this concept of Uncle Sam. Now, Uncle Sam isn't a real, wasn't a real person. It was a personification of the American government. And some of the ways that um, we see symbols in this poster is by, first of all, the color usage is red white and blue okay we also have the stars in his hat representing the stars and and the stripes of of the american flag and one of the other things that i find really interesting just about this picture in general is um no matter where you were standing so if you stood towards the left of this picture or right in front of it, or towards the right of this picture, Uncle Sam's eyes, and even his finger pointing towards you, always are facing you. So it doesn't matter where you were standing when you saw this poster, either from a side angle or from head on, you were going to feel Uncle Sam's eyes looking at you and his finger pointing towards you. So that's just a really interesting way of, of grabbing someone's attention and not letting it go. Okay. Um, number four, plain folks, the use of everyday people to sell a product or service. Speakers and ads appear to make the person uh, to be one of the people. So this is a Swiffer commercial where Jerry Bell He's talking about how he never has time to 
sit in his couch and have deep couch sitting because he's always busy cleaning and Swiffer makes it easy for him to clean up his house quickly so that he can actually sit down and enjoy his couch in some deep, deep couch sitting. Number five is bandwagon. This is when um, this form of propaganda attempts to persuade the target audience to take a course of action that everyone else is taking. Join the crowd. This technique reinforces people's natural desire to be on the winning side. So we kind of refer to bandwagon more when we're talking about sports teams. Like, hey, everyone got on the bandwagon because they're winning right now. But when the team is losing, everyone is not a fan. Um, but you can also use it and see it in propaganda techniques um, for commercials and advertisements. So one of the ways that McDonald's uh, has an appearance of bandwagon is by saying that billions and billions of people have been served food from McDonald's. Number six is name calling, which is the use of names that evoke fear or hatred in the viewer. This technique links a person or an idea to a negative symbol. Um, we also often see this with political figures. You know, um, we, we hear that they're a traitor or a terrorist or uh, a communist or a coward. And so there's a lot of like negative sort of connotations that come with um, politicians in general, but um, it can be done too for um, other products as well where the negative aspects are being pointed out. And then finally, number seven, the, the last one, is card stacking. And this is the strategy of showing the product's best features only and telling half-truths and omitting or lying about its potential problems. Now let us apply your understanding of our topic. Turn to page 23 on your English module, quarter two module two for our exercise. Direction. Read the advertisement and answer the questions that follow. What is the advertisement all about? Kitties, are you ready? All right, number one. When will the event happen? Very good. November 19, 2020. Number two. Where will the event take place? Good job! Iloilo Central Elementary School Covered Court Number 3 How many participants will be accommodated? You're right, 100 participants. Number four, can pupils from other schools join the Kabalaka camp? Why? Yes, correct. No, because it is exclusive to ISIS learners. This time, let us answer what I have learned. Now, get a pen and paper with you and fill in the missing word. 
It refers to the spreading of information, ideas, or rumor with the intention of influencing people's opinion or emotion. Yes, absolutely correct. Propaganda Persuades one to acquire a style, behavior, or attitude because everyone else is doing it. Yes, you're right. Band Wagon uses misleading or unproven statistics to convince the audience to believe it as a fact. Indeed, card stacking uses an individual thing idea or symbol that carries respect authority prestige and other positive qualities along with the product to make it look more acceptable good job we call it as transfer gives a negative label to an idea person or product so that it will be rejected uses ordinary people enjoying the product to make it seem practical and of good value That's correct. Plain folks uses an important person or famous figure to endorse a product. Yes, you're right. Testimonial uses glowing terms in describing a product telling how wonderful it is. You're correct. That's glittering generality. Since we already had an understanding what are the differences of propaganda devices, I bet we are now ready for another exercise. Number one. Join the Olympics 2021 in Japan. Buy three tickets and get one free. Join the thousands of sports enthusiasts and enjoy this once-in-a-lifetime experience. That's correct. It's Ben Wagon. Number two, fly skyline, feel at home in the skies. Plain fox is the correct answer. Number three. TV host and actor Vic Soho says that when it comes to flying, he always chooses Skyline, his favorite airline. Good job! Testimonial Number 4. If you don't fly Skyline, you are simply not in. Excellent.
Excellent. Name calling. Number five. Feeling safe and comfortable is the greatest experience one should have while flying up in the sky. Fly high with Skyline and have the great feeling of comfort. Very good. The correct answer is transfer. Number six. Skyline is the best airline ever in this decade. Powered with advanced technology, it offers exquisite comfort and satisfaction for frequent flyers. Absolutely correct. The answer is card stacking. Number seven, fly with Skyline and feel that you are in a cloud nine, skimming over a summer meadow. Yes, you're right. Glittering generalities. Incredible performance, kiddies. What a great job. Indeed, you gained something new today. By observing the exercises given, can anybody give me what is the meaning of propaganda? Bravo, kiddies! By answering the questions correctly, it simply describes you understood the topic well. And this sums up our lesson about propaganda. I hope you learned something new today. Once again, I am Teacher Giselle, your learning pal in English 6. Have a great day. Bye!